I am a producer, arranger, writer, artist, remixer, <laughs> you name it, I've, uh, I've pretty much done it at some point. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I do specialize in electronic music, but I feel like my signature has kind of become this, this hybrid. So my writing is always quite pop structured and very uh, commercially accessible. Uh, but I, I love my guitars, I love my big symphonic arrangements and uh, throw in that uh, electronic background in there. I, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of become my, my signature style, but I do generally work in a lot of different genres. So today we're going to be looking at a song called Passenger. It's from the latest album, The Rebellion. Uh, both the album and the single are out now. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how I went about putting the song together. Okay, so yeah, I, I generally start off uh, a song mapping out the chords and I'll get a nice simple pad uh, to j just play around with some ideas. I mean, most of the instruments in this song are from, uh, from all of Reason's uh, rack instruments. So it's, uh, it's the beauty of, uh, of using Reason is that everything is just integrated in. Although I have just got some new rack extensions which I'm dying to try out. So uh, yeah, I created the pad using a, a mouse drum, a very simple sawtooth uh, with, a, with a little bit of FM, um, a hell of a lot of reverb, and uh, yeah, equalized, taking the, the low end out just to, to make sure that there's no muddiness going on with any of those bass frequencies. And uh, yeah, a nice, warm, simple pad sound just to kind of set the tone and just to play around with some ideas. But like I say, it's a nice texture, so I kind of decided to, to keep it in and, and just sink it into the mix a little bit. With the pads, I'll, I'll map out the, the kind of the, the bass progression with the chords and then uh, start putting in the, the bass line. And the bass line will generally change as the song evolves. Uh, so you'll, you'll hear straight away, this actually follows the same rhythm as the kick. really simple, the beauty of working in pop, you don't have to overcomplicate things. <laughs> uh, so that follows the rhythm of the kick and what I like to do with my basses, uh, that's just a really simple uh, finger bass uh, and I've kept it pretty dry uh, and not too much EQ going on and I've double tracked it with a compressor as well so it just kind of fattens itself out a bit. What I like to do with my basses is, is to layer it with a sub bass. Um, and again, this is really, really simple. It's a simple sine wave uh, uh, sub bass line. And what I'll tend to do, you'll hear this now. And I'll just isolate that so you can hear it a little bit better. So that's like the real, pure, real low-end bass frequencies. And uh, quite often I'll just layer those two together and either EQ out the, those low frequencies in the, the bass player so that the, the, the sub-bass can do all the work um, or just, uh, just, just leave them both mixed together just to, to, to fatten that bass line out a little bit. But together you get a really strong, constant, powerful bass line that can, that can kind of push things through. And uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously not going to be suitable for things like orchestral arrangements and whatnot, because it, it's quite a constant level. And uh, to, to use this would probably require a hell of a lot of automation. <laughs> but uh, but for, for this genre, and uh, particularly pop music and electronic music as well, it's perfect. So it's a really nice, fat bass line there. The bass player, uh, the, the electric bass, is, uh, yeah, it's a combinator patch that, that's in the, the Reason Factory sound bank. Uh, the sub bass is custom programmed, so it's a, a program Thor, uh, Thor synthesizer. 
And like I say, it's just a, a very simple sign, sign synth. Sometimes I'll come up with the, the, the bass line, the percussive rhythm, sometimes it's the vocal hook. So um, with, with Passenger, I think I did come up with the, the chords and the bass first and kind of wanted to, to set that tone before, before putting any hooks over the top. Um, now anybody who knows me knows that I'm a sucker for piano and strings. And uh, I knew that this was gonna be quite a, a sentimental piece. So I wanted to get a, a piano hook going on. I actually didn't want a piano accompaniment in the track. I just wanted a nice little uh, hook. So I got uh, this one of Reason's producer pianos, and this is actually one of the uh, Propeller Heads refills uh, that's available on their site. And uh, it's a very simple octave hook. So just layering the two octaves together. Putting the two together makes it just a little bit more powerful. It sounds great by itself, uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, it, with, the, with the two together, it kind of punches through a little bit. Because this is going to be for the, this little piano hook plays throughout the, the chorus section. Um, and like I say, it's from one of um, Propeller Head's uh, piano patches. I think it's just called Reason Pianos. Um, and it's a Yamaha, because I like my Yamahas. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've stuck, uh, all I did was uh, adjust the EQ in the patch a little bit, just to kind of suit my tone, uh, push through those high ends, so like I say, it kind of pierces through the, the full-on arrangement of the chorus. Now what I did is uh, apply uh, an insane reverb uh, on the piano, and uh, the reverb patch is uh, a patch called Film Score in the RV7000 uh, reverb rack, uh, reverb unit. <laughs> um, insanely long delay, um, no damping, uh, a big chunk of uh, high EQ on there. And what I did is applied a compressor after that, so that once the piano, uh, once the piano kicks in, um, once the level dies down, the reverb kind of trails and you get this really great big long piano soundscape going on. Um, so if you just put the compressor, compressor on and set the compression ratio quite harsh, uh, but what you want is a slow attack so that when that piano does, when those notes play, they do punch through before the compressor kicks in and, and really fattens out that reverb. Just like that. So we've already got the bare bones of the song so far. Uh, and like I say, at this point, it's just really setting the tone. Uh, the whole point with this latest album was to really um, emphasize uh, acoustic elements as well as symphonic elements, just to kind of bring a little bit more of a, a human touch to the electronic aspect of my work. Uh, and the way I did that was take a really electronic approach to some of the guitars. Uh, and again, this is one of the uh, combinator patches that comes with Reason's factory sound bank. And what I did is kind of treat it like, a, like an arpeggio synth and just have them like really stabbing uh, those chords throughout. And th this guitar kicks in, it's just an acoustic guitar, uh, kicks in right at the beginning of the track and plays pretty much throughout. And like I say, I kind of took a, a synth approach to it. So, I mean, it sounds like an acoustic guitar, but it, it's just being played in a really an inhuman way. <laughs> and, and that was kind of intentional. I, I, I wanted to create this kind of pseudo dreamlike uh, soundscape with this song. So having guitars that didn't sound like guitars was kind of perfect for this track and uh, like I say I really didn't do too much to it. I did tweak uh, the patch a little bit in terms of compressing it and equalizing it um, and again uh, with the compressor keep the uh, I kept the attack quite slow 
so that those notes really punch through, especially since they're, they're constant throughout. I didn't want it to get too, too muddy. And uh, yeah, again, kept it really, really dry so that the arrangement stays nice and clean and uh, really boosted those high ends so that uh, I, I think that's where the, the more human sound comes from. If you're recording acoustic guitars, you really manage to capture um, that all the, those high frequencies with the fingers moving around the strings. So to uh, when I am using synth guitars, I kind of really massively boost those high ends to, to kind of achieve that, that, uh, that human sound, even though these are very clearly programmed guitars. <laughs> so at this point, I would have started uh, mapping out some of the vocals, and I probably would have started with just a rough demo vocal. Even if I didn't have any lyrics, I'd just be just singing the melody, just trying out different ideas and, and see what worked. Um, in my head, I already had that uh, passenger hook that kicks in at the end of the chorus. And let me just find it for you. Passenger, passenger, passenger. Passenger, passenger, passenger. Now obviously that's the, the final vocals, but <laughs> I think that's what I, uh, I experimented with first. And uh, yeah, I would have um, I would have played around with the, the main the main melody. I generally start with the with the chorus. Uh, doing a lot of work in pop music, it's normally the chorus hook that's considered the most important and the the key part of the song. So um, so I probably would have laid down that um, that vocal first. So, um, and with demos, it, like, it, it's just it's rough and ready. It's more a, a case of getting the ideas down so I can, so, so they don't disappear from my mind. I never write anything down, so I know that's, that's my own destruction. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but on the final vocal, you can probably hear there's just a tiny little reverb um, on, on this lead. Please give me the final piece of you. And like I say, doing a lot of work in pop, you, you want to keep things quite dry, uh, but to, to add uh, the extra atmosphere and to, to kind of widen that sound a little bit, uh, I added a delay to the lead. And that bounces between the two channels. So like I say, you, you get that, that kind of rhythm of the song and it, it widens it a little bit. I took out the high end round about uh, the 3K mark just so that it doesn't interfere too much with the lead vocals and, and any, of the, any of the harmonies and backing vocals that are going on at that point. There's some gentle uh, pitching going on, just some gentle. Um, again, having a background in, in electronic music, um, the pitch correction um, and, and auto tune it, it's almost it's almost a requirement now you'll have artists come in and they will assume that that you'll have that loaded up so and and again being uh, being self a self-produced artist and like I was saying when I was just thrashing out ideas and getting those demo vocal demo vocals down um, when you're focusing on just getting those ideas out it is easier to just line up um, a pitch corrector so you don't have to worry too much about what the, the actual vocal sounds like. And, uh, but yeah, my, I always strive to keep my vocal sounding as, as natural as possible. Um, when I'm working with other artists, sometimes they do request that they, they do have that unnatural program sound. And I think it's all, all down to preference. Me personally, um, I, I keep it as natural as possible because I would hate to turn up to one of my live shows and sound completely different to what I sound like on my albums. <laughs> like I say, I'll, um, I'll lay down the demo vocals, get the ideas out, and it's sometimes I'll start working on the harmony straight away, especially if there are sections of the song that I feel like they should be built, and I know for sure that they are going to be built. Sometimes I'll come back and, and work on them and, and make sure that they're all really nice and, and tight and polished. Uh, but since I, I have them all here, uh, there's quite a lot of harmonies in Passenger that was sunken really deeply into the mix. 
and, and that was purely because I wanted that, that lead vocal to punch through, but it's probably worth highlighting how many um, harmonies are on the lead vocal in, in the final version. This is uh, all the vocals from the chorus uh, together. And with the lead, which is what I meant to do in the first place, <laughs> with the lead it sounds like this. So, so yeah, and it's it's generally it's generally me doing all of the vocals, um, especially to start with. I mean, even if I am using uh, session session musicians or, or collaborating with other artists, I'll, I'll lay down the the demo vocal and then send it to them so they can use it as a reference. And that often in, includes the female vocals, uh, which uh, I have, either have to sing it all in falsetto or I pitch them up. <laughs> Uh, so just before the chorus kicks in, you'll probably hear this uh, kind of reversed build up, uh, building into the lead vocal dropping, uh, and I'll just isolate that so you can hear it better. And I, 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 I tend to use that quite a lot because it's a, a really nice way to kind of ramp up to a big section and uh, uh, it, it's probably useful to explain how that's done. All I did was take this, uh, this first note, it's a mix down right now, so uh, I'll deconstruct it as best as I can. <laughs> just take this first note, that please, um, and just whack a massive uh, reverb on it, keep the trail really long, and um, ideally keep it 100% wet as well. Uh, mix that down, uh, stick it back into the track, and all you do is reverse it. Reverse it, chop it, and level it how you please, and I'll isolate that so you can hear how it sounds by itself. And just put it into the mix right before the vocal comes in. Nice and simple. And if you do it right up until that first point of the waveform, It's like you're dragging that vocal uh, into the mix, and it, it just sounds really cool. It's a kind of it's a nice piece of ear candy for the track. At this point, I probably would start working on on the drums, trying to remember what order I did this in when I was working on the song, um, and it, it just depends on the song. With uh, when I am doing uh, dance music, like a lot of my remixes and funk star stuff. I generally start off with the with the drums because they are they're just the driving force behind the entire song. Uh, but with my uh, in in with my work in other genres and especially the the really intricate arrangements like this one, I'll kind of save it because uh, the emphasis is more on the melody rather than anything else. Uh, but still, I, I'm a I'm a sucker for those enormous great big beats and uh, that kind of 80s heavily processed big reverb sound is, uh, is really on trend right now and I think um, I was probably influenced quite heavily by that as a kid because my mum would always play those, those 80s big pop songs uh, when I was growing up so I think, I think I've grown up to this addiction for my great big drums which would probably explain why I started off doing dance music. Uh, so, uh, so yeah that's, that's kind of passed over to the latest album and uh, I'll just explain how I, uh, how I went about that. So you kind of heard the, the rhythm for the kick in, in the bass line a little bit earlier. Uh, so I just got a, a great big kick drum. It's one from the Reason Factory Sound Bank. And it's, it's just nice and big and fat. Nice big fat sound. It's got a nice punch uh, in the low end, but it's also got some nice low mids as well. Um, and just stick it to the... Uh, the, the kind of the, uh, the slightly syncopated rhythm that I wanted to, to cry, try and create with this track. So it is a, it's a little bit of a, an abstract beat uh, compared to, to what I used to work on, especially 
before this album, I, I really wanted to think, start thinking outside the box and, and put myself out of my com comfort zone a little bit. So I really experimented with these, uh, with the, with these really different beats that uh, is different from my usual style. So I got the kick in. Naturally, that was never going to be big enough for me. Uh, so I started uh, incorporating some of these symphonic elements in, and I got some orchestral drums. Um, and this is a custom patch um, that I, I made myself. The samples are, are all from the Reason Factory Sound Bank, stuck into a, a redrum a drum programmer. And then I, um, yeah, I split it with uh, with the dry sound, and uh, all of them patched through a Screen Four uh, distortion unit. And uh, if uh, if you listen to the Screen Four by itself, you can hear what that's doing. So that's with the Screen Four. Uh, that's just the Screen Four isolated. Uh, the dry drums sound like this. So yeah, all I did was uh, was put them together. I sunk down the the distorted drums quite low down compared to the dry ones. I wanted the dry ones to punch through because that's where you're going to get your punchiness from and the real kind of impact from those uh, from those tom drums. And then the distortion just kind of it adds a bit more texture. It fattens it out in the background. And then the whole thing, um, I added uh, another great big reverb. Um, again, a long trail, not too much damping on it, um, but some damping needs to be applied because uh, there's quite a lot of high-end frequencies in these drums and we don't want them punching through too much so that it starts obstructing other elements in the track. So altogether, these, uh, these orchestral drums sound like this. And they just follow the, uh, the, the kick drum, which uh, I just laid on top of each other. And that just ba that basically made the, the kick of the entire track. So it's really deep, really powerful, but uh, with a really nice kind of punchy, crunchy texture to it. That's, uh, yeah, big, big, punchy, crunchy, 80s drums. <laughs> so yeah, after that I chucked in the snare and the snare is uh, a nice acoustic uh, snare from a metal kit, I believe. I actually sampled this from a drum loop um, and layered it with a one of the factory sounds. Um, and this one kind of gives it the the high end impact that that, that those uh, processed eighties drum sounds have, uh, but I wanted to keep the 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 rock elements really quite prominent throughout the song. So uh, so the metal drum is the lead, and the impact drum was just layered underneath it. Um, and all I did for this was uh, boost the high end a little bit so to give it its shininess and then I used uh, Reason's pulverizer unit and uh, it does what it says on the tin, it kind of smashes up your sound a bit. <laughs> uh, what it will do, it acts as a compressor but it also adds a little bit of um, fold back so it, it adds a, a nice lot of, of texture and I've literally set this to 50-50 uh, uh, dry wet blend so that uh, again you get this punchiness because uh, if, if you put it on 100% wet it will literally squash the crap out of it uh, and I'll, I'll show you that on 100% right now. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear that but it's it's just compressing the crap out of it, it's losing its its immediate punchiness. So set it to a 50-50 and uh, keep keep that dryness back in it and you'll you'll get that punchiness back. And it also stops suppressing the, the high ends as well so you, you keep that that lovely shine to it.
So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just play all those together just to show you what we have in terms of the, the rhythm section so far. Yeah, so, so yeah, we've really kind of captured that, that big sound that we were trying to achieve. And to be honest, I think, I think the reverb does uh, do a hell of a lot of that work, but also uh, layering it so much, just, just keep, it, keep it controlled, I'll say, when it comes to layering. Uh, if you are gonna layer it, make sure you, the, the supporting layers are sunken down into the mix, otherwise it's just gonna start getting muddy and especially if you're using compressors and, and side chains and things like that you're going to start losing your punchiness especially when it comes to the the final mix and the mastering so just be aware of that um, so next was the the kind of the, the high percussion and uh, I found this loop this electronic loop uh, percussive loop and I just laid it over the top to be honest I originally did it as a placeholder um, and it, it just sounded great, so I kept it in. This is the loop isolated. And I may have changed a little bit of the pattern sequence here. I, I honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> I've made too much music this year. Uh, so, but that was just, uh, again, that was, um, uh, a, a just a, a reason factory loop put into a, a Rex player. Um, it was already a little bit wet, as you can hear. Um, and all I did was pulverize it again. Uh, I am loving this this pulverizing unit. Uh, I, I did squash it a lot of uh, a little bit more. So uh, because it's kind of the supporting rhythm. It was, uh, there was enough room in the mix to accommodate a bit more of a harsh compression um, and uh, kept the, uh, the mix, I don't know, about 70% towards the wet. So it is, it is quite heavily squashed at this point. But, uh, but th that, I mean, that was, that was pretty much the intent. Seen as the, seen as the loop itself was already wet, I, I wanted to, to get that reverb and kind of drag it up. Uh, with some really harsh compression, which you can uh, which you can very clearly hear. That's about all we have time for right now. If you want to see the rest of this tutorial, go and check out the latest issue of Computer Music Magazine out right now. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android and in print.